Round one. Hmm. Yeah, I think we keep it. We don't have a white mana, but we are just a white mana away from this hand being pretty good. Hixus is definitely an awkward part of this hand, but it's tough for me to... It's it's difficult for me to mulligan a hand that's got... Uh, well, first of all, castable removal, but on top of that, just such a good distribution of spells and lands. Typically, when you've got three to four lands and, and you know... Basically equivalent spells. It's, it's pretty good. This this hand happened to work out pretty nice for us right there since we immediately top decked a planes. Rune Servitor. That's a good card. I like the Rune Servitor. Yeah, I think if he attacks with Servitor, we're, we're definitely going to take it. Green-white typically just has infinite uh, combat tricks, so I think it's in our best interest. We can play Claustrophobia if we have to, though. Yeah, well, we are definitely doing that. So let's just go land, sidearm, bastion. And Phobia the Cast Ellen Castellan. All right, Griffin's pretty decent. Yeah, Void Mage is in pretty good tempo here, I would say. So let's just bash in. We'll go land. Void Mage, bounce Griffin. And I'm going to re-equip to Void Mage. So that way we don't even have to offer the trade to Servitor. He basically has to use a combat trick to kill our Void Mage. Although now he can Wild Instincts his Servitor to our Aven, but I think that's fine. Ooh. Well, let's Vile first, I guess. There's our second White, so now we're in Hyxis range, which is actually kind of nice. So I think we just, so I could swing for five here, and then I can actually shut off his griffin on his turn, and then set up for a Hyxis. It's not bad. But I kind of want to leave the Void Mage back to block the Servitor again. Take the griffin. All right. I think we're just going to equip Bash in with Avon. Re equip to Void Mage. Play a Planes like we've got Celestial Flare or something. Pass. And I don't even think we're going to bust Vile on the Griffin. I'll just I'll take the three from it. We're currently ahead on the race, so. Okay. This is still going to be okay. Main deck Caterpillar is not completely out of the realm of, of uh, realism here. So we'll take our three. Automaton's not bad either. I think this is a good time to do the the Hyxis play though, so let's equip sidearm to Avon. 
Let's get in there. And we're going to play Rogue's Passage. We're going to re-equip to Void Mage. We're going to leave up Hyxis mana. So you could deal three, five, seven, plus potentially a couple combat tricks. So I think we are blocking this turn. I guess we're gonna block the Servitor because I'd rather eat with eat the other two with the Hyxis. But I do want to get a combat trick out of the way here because it makes sense. Okay, so we're gonna block Servitor. And I'm not blocking with Hyxis, even though I could. Yeah. We we definitely wanted him to... Because if he has like a Titanic Growth too, we could have potentially just died if I hadn't blocked. So we'll let that resolve. Now we play Hyxis. Eat his guys. Disciple of the Ring. Don't quite have anything to use with it yet, but let's quip Aven. If he has flare, we'll just say, yeah, that's easy. That's easy. So maybe I should have just equipped a Hyxis then if that was so easy. Although we still have lethal next turn. So now we actually re-equip. We equip Hyxis so it's out of Wild Instinct's range. And I think we actually play, I could go Disciple of the Ring. Probably makes the most sense. Makes the best use of mana. It doesn't let me use Alchemist Vial, but... I still like it. That's actually no big deal. So he's he's getting back Celestial Flare, which I don't think is going to bring him out of this. I mean, so we know one of the cards in his hand is a Celestial Flare, which means he doesn't have any means to kill us this turn. Which is certainly important to note. So I guess the play is make Hyxis unblockable. Then we swing with both of our guys. Actually, no. Yeah, this still works, I think, right? Unless I'm missing something. Like, I just sack Disciple, and my opponent takes five. All right. Still a close game. Opponent's main deck in, uh, cost a Caterpillar, which is certainly a problem against us. Main deck reclaim, reclaim, too, is a little bit unusual. It's not out of the realm of possibility. Mighty of the Mass is, is expected, and uh, he's got some good creatures. Castellan. Not the biggest Griffin fan, but Griffin was fine there. Dealt some damage to us. Um, we have anything against green-white other than what we're main decking? I, I can't imagine we have too much of a sideboard plan in general. Scrapskin Drake's not even a good sideboard plan against charging Griffin. 
Yeah, I think that, what, that, is that the only flyer we saw out of him, really? Um, yeah, I don't think we've got too much of a sideboard plan. Sidearm actually played pretty well there for us, to be honest. But uh, I think everything's kind of the way it should be, I guess. So let's try this again. Yeah, we'll keep it. All right, card's pretty intimidating. Hmm. Guess I should have played a white. Pretend like I have Celestial Flare. So now I guess I chump, right? So I can at least play an Automaton. I mean, otherwise I don't know how I deal with a... I don't know how I deal with a 4-5 otherwise. I mean, I guess I'm running a couple of Void Mages, but... Okay. It's pretty problematic. Could top deck a Void Mage. Unfortunately, Harbinger of the Tide does not do it. So, Void Mage would be good. Uh, Claustrophobia would be fine. Even though he's got the Caterpillar in the deck. It still would be fine. But, I mean, we're in pretty serious trouble here if we don't draw something live. Unfortunately, not quite it. All right, well, at least we can block the knight. And, yeah, we're going to trade off a disciple for it. I don't think disciple is good enough to do anything else. I kind of wish Sidearm was a little bit better for us here. <laughs> now we just have to, unfortunately, chump block. I guess I could bring Maritime Guard in. The problem is Maritime Guard blocks... Castellan well, but it doesn't block the knight well. All right. Let's try game three here. So what can I do? I, I guess I, I just don't really have a sideboard. I just don't. I don't have anything. Maritime Guard, which, like I said, just doesn't seem that great. What else did he run? Castellan. What else did we see game one? Why can't I remember? Um, Charging Griffin. It's not good against that. Constructs don't seem all that good either, although they block his three drops. Do I want to send to sleep over like an epiphany? It doesn't seem very good, especially without spell mastery. Mm, I think we just try it again.
All right. Keep it. Kind of wish we had disperse, but only because my opponent's running a lot of combat tricks and grasp of the Hieromancer and stuff. I guess I don't mind milling a couple of lands. Um, I'm going to Vile first. Harbinger's cool. Harbinger would work better if my opponent didn't have... He gets the extra card off this, which is better for him than for me, but that's okay. I still think it's a better trade for us overall because his guy's only a... Well, at least he doesn't have a castle on, I guess. All right, let's drop... Uh, I guess we could drop a Stoward Ava. I'm going to drop a Tomaton, though. Mostly because it makes better use of the mana. Um, that's actually fine. Now we get to go Avon plus Cleric, which is pretty sweet. Hopefully we don't get tragically arrogant. Rock smaller. Well, it's actually manageable. So, I think that we, all right, I think we bash with Stoward Aven. Play Disciple of the Ring and play Sidearm. Oh, I can't do that. That's actually still fine. So we're going to take a hit from the Mauler. My plan is next turn to flash out a, a Harbinger to, to bounce it again. And I think just getting Disciple on board is, is good for us. Should be able to tempo reasonably well. Yeah, Orchard Spirit's not hyper-intimidating. Ooh, Mighty Leap's actually a pretty decent combat trick. He could have Enshrouding Mist, but in response, like in Harbinger of the Tide. So I think that's what we're gonna that's what we're gonna plan on doing. Because remember, it does untap the Rock Smaller now because of. Uh, so I kind of want him to cast Enshrouding Mist here, so I can Harbinger. And that that actually be a really big blowout because it would reset this, and it would get rid of an Entrouting Mist. And if he has Entrouting Mist, he'd be hyper incentivized to use it there, which I like. So. I guess even if I mighty leap, well, let me think. So if I mighty leap, yeah, I guess we mighty leap plus exile it to give another plus one, plus one. And that makes my guy a six, seven. I kind of like that.
You know, the the craziest thing about this to me is I I just don't I don't get it. Like th- obviously that did work well for my opponent, but wouldn't have untapping a like I don't get it. That's just amazing to me that he he had the enshrouding mist. And I'm unfortunately one mana short of being able to flash this out, so I guess I'm just gonna. I'm I'm very surprised by that, though. I mean, I don't know how you, I don't know how you couldn't be surprised by that. <laughs> like, how did my how did my opponent not use Entrouting Mist on his Rock Smaller? That's what's so incredible to me. Um, that is incredible. I don't think I'll ever understand that. Um, so Harbinger of the Tide. Do it now. Yeah, I guess so. The problem is... Well, I can't really afford to take six damage, so... Like, I, I guess what I don't understand is, why didn't my opponent in Shrouding Mist his guy block with that block, block, pump? Like, how... <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Does that make sense to anybody else? Like, I would have sworn to you that he didn't have in Shrouding Mist solely because of how much better a blowout play untapping the ma- the mauler and pumping the orchard spirit and blocking two of my guys was, right? Like, even with his play of destroying my disciple, which is a good card, but not even that bonkers in my deck. I don't know. I'm just, I'm confused. So let's play the sidearm. Let's equip sidearm here. Get in for three. Like, I could use vial now, but I don't think I actually want to use vial just yet. Put out free blade. Equip free blade. So we take 10 potentially here. Hmm. Oh, he gets Vigilance too. So I guess I... One card left. I can make Mauler unable to block and crack in for nine, but I think Mauler's getting too big. So I wish I had equipped something else, but it was a mistake. Oh, wow, he had a... Another uh, combat trick. It's impressive. It's impressive. So, I guess we would have died had I not blocked. It's impressive. Really impressive. Um... Guess we have to play defense mode and draw into an answer. Well, no cards left in my opponent's hand. 
Gonna have to use rocks. Gonna have to use the ability on rock smaller to turn it off. So I can't currently double block it. I think I'm gonna take three for two this turn. So I guess I gotta stay back on defense. Triple block the rock smaller. Okay. Hmm. Now I kind of want to think about this. Because I can block Orchard Spirit and then I can chump Rock Smaller. If I chump Rock Smaller, I take four. And I'm left with an Aven and a Construct. I can get in for five. My draws are... My outs are Claustrophobia, Double Void Mage. But I have other outs, I guess. Those are still outs for... I think we just stick to the triple block. Guess we equip. Actually, kind of glad he didn't. Uh... Actually, I'm a little surprised he didn't double attack there.
Still got some outs. Hmm. Maybe not now. Well, if he didn't have the second creature, we did have an out. All right. Good games. We'll see you guys round two.